But, you know, if you test positive for the virus, then quarantine is, you know, the next step because you we know that you're infected and not only quarantine for you not giving it to other people, but also quarantine to see how how fast or how quickly it's going to affect you and how ill you're going to become. So these are things that are being working out of the hospital. I was in the hospital today and the medical director was telling me that, you know, we're meeting all day, every day, trying to put these teams together and these action plans together so that we, you know, at, at my hospital, uh, they haven't had a case yet. So we're gearing up to be prepared for when somebody is positive, what are we going to do? Because this is fairly new. And it's just getting to the United States. So we're working in China. The information coming out of there is not reliable because obviously right. they don't want people to really know how bad it is. And so we can just rely on what they're telling us. And from what the medical professionals that get out information, they had to be very careful about doing that in China because it could end very badly for them. But they're the, the, the things I hear are saying that it's much worse in China than they're letting on because they don't want the, you know, the rest of the world to be afraid to, to deal with them and Chinese people can't do this and that. So we just have to be vigilant. We understand the virus. We understand what we're dealing with. Now we just have to put precautions in so we don't, you know, infect ourselves. And if we do that and yeah. panic, I think we'll be much better off. But what happens, because they are saying, um, what if you don't have insurance? That's another uh, concern, people who don't have health care, because people will be charged. And if you don't can't afford to go to the hospital, what are you going to do if you're infected with the coronavirus? Right. And that's another concern. Right. Well, you know, in this country, it is illegal for the hospitals to deny care to someone who is ill. I've been taking care of women with no insurance for 30 years. They all get the same care as somebody with Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. You know, so it's not going to be a situation where the hospital is going to be out there in front and say, you don't have a medical card, get away from here. You know, they can't do that. It's illegal. So I don't think people should panic any more than usual if they don't have insurance. If they get sick, they're still going to come to the hospital. Hospital still going to have to take care of them. So, uh, again, the, the issue, the most important thing for everybody is to not contract the virus in the first place. And that can be done by keeping your hands clean, sanitized, and out of your face, out of your mouth and nose. I, how, what do you – and I, I'm, I don't have a crystal ball. I know nobody else does either. But, I, you know, you hope – we hope – to get behind this, to get this behind us as, as quickly as possible. I, um, how does, you know, is this something that is still affecting us? Um, do you think in the, by when the summer gets here or, is, um, you know, I, I can't remember. I remember, you know, I'm thinking back to the last, thing that they talked about as a as a pandemic i don't know if it was was it h1n1 or something like that i think was was the last thing i remember hearing folks talking about and it, it was talked about and talked about and then it wasn't and then it, i didn't hear about it again and this uh uh virus do, do you think this is something that will be um something we'll be talking about into the into the summer in the same way or do you think people will get finally get the message and and it'll die down some uh, because they're taking the proper precautions. I mean, I know that's what I'd hope in a perfect in a perfect world that it that we're not talking about it at that point. But is that realistic? Is that pie in the sky? Or well, let me give you an example Great of question. a virus that when it first came on, everybody who got the virus died. You remember that virus, oh. HIV? Oh wow! Uh -huh. now, right, right. Okay. Everybody that got it died. Now, very few people are dying from it because now multiple medications have been developed and we can basically get a patient's uh, lymph nodes, lymphocytes down 
to undetectable, i.e. Magic Johnson. So something mm-hmm. that comes on and kill, you know, it's a terrible thing right now. It's killing lots of people right now. However, like I said in the article that I read, there's already a tremendous amount of information known about this virus. And they're working on vaccines, et cetera. But it takes a while to develop a vaccine. It's not something that happens overnight. So the, the expert said it's not going to happen right away. And uh, until it does happen, the virus, unless we use public health and you know proper hygiene, it's going to continue. But eventually, we will come up with vaccines and med- you know medications that can curtail the virus. But right now, we're trying to keep it from being uh, a pandemic, you know, of, of massive proportions. Mm-hmm. And right now, the only way to do that is for us to do take a public health approach and a, uh, a sanitary approach and keep this virus. It would be different if we didn't know anything about how people get it. We didn't know. It. We know that it only can get in your body if you put it in there. So that's the take home message. And all the sanitation, all the bottle water is not going to help unless we do these, this common sense public health issue, cleaning your hands, wiping down services where you work in or where you live in to keep the virus out of your system. And if we do that, that right now, that's the only thing that's going to help us. Because there's no medicine for it, as you stated earlier. So the key point, keep it out of your body. I like that one. I like that. Chief, what you got? You got. Well, I tell you, this has been a very informative show. Uh, I know that. Well, I tell you, Doctor Albright, you 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 made me feel good until you you brought up the point about the water because uh, my wife had me buy so much water, I had to put some of it on layaway. So uh, you know, <laughs> like I said, all, all you do, Mike. And say, baby, what does this water go do? Why do we need so much water? Because it's she gonna hose water. him down. Put out the faucet. She, she gonna dash you in the face with the water. See, it just it, it's just a panic thing. And fortunately, Mike, fortunately, uh, it's not necessary. Or it just costs you some money. Yeah, but it did. It cost me a lot of money. Anything, yeah, it's not gonna do anything to prevent the virus from getting into you the only thing unless you take that water and boil it and use it to wash your hands yeah or you know or, or, or deliver but, a baby yeah <laughs> or, so yeah right that boil it and then deliver a baby <laughs> other than that the take-home message is that you know don't forget your common sense sure and don't forget information is the key information sure. and knowledge is the key in this thing and we have the information, and that says that you're not going to get it just walking down the street breathing air. You're not going to get it by drinking water. Sure. You're not going to get it by eating, you know, I mean, unless now food preparation, you know, not cleaning your hands or somebody fixing sure. your hamburger, you know, said that, you know, so that kind of precaution that we're supposed to be taking anyway, if right. we ramp up on those, so that would be the thing that I would say. Just make sure that you pay attention to what you're doing with your hands. If you're going to cook, make sure you wash those hands first. If you're going to be handling people or anything, going into public areas where you got all kind of stuff going on, make sure you wash your hands when you get, they they said, put some sanitizer in your car. So when you come out from being in the mall or whatever, make sure you, before you put your hands in your face, sanitize your hands. When you get home, Sanitize your hands, you know, and, and if we are virulent and vigilant in keeping our hands clean, you're unlikely to put that virus in your system and sure. then you won't have to deal with it. Gotcha. The thing that Dr. Arthur said about health, you know, you did, still need to exercise. You need to eat a balanced diet. You know, you need to, you know, if you need vitamin C or whatever, take it. You know, just keep yourself as healthy as possible because if you're weak, and you contract the virus, then it, it has a much better chance of harming you rather than if you're healthy. Gotcha. So just a basic common sense 
you know, public health issue here is probably going to be the most important thing that we can do to prevent this virus from really affecting us and our community. Sure. And thank you. And Dr. Audrey, any parting words for, for our listeners? Good hand washing and good hygiene at home and in public. Make sure you wash your hands very well. And okay. if you have to wear these, CDC is not recommending masks, quote unquote. But if you have to, if you need one, use it. Protect yourself and protect others. Gotcha. Well, we're going to let you have the final word. And, and again, um, Dr. Audrey and Dr. Albright, we really appreciate you being here this afternoon, well, this evening. Yeah. You have really given us some incredible information. And um, then, Matt, do you want to add anything before we take it out? No, they got it. I just want to add my echo my thanks um, to you because that, that I feel a little better, but now I can make everybody else do that. You know, make sure that they, if they're coughing in their elbow, make sure they wash their clothes. Don't don't keep it around there for a week smelling bad because if they're not washing their clothes in a week, they've got some other problems. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Exactly. No, because of, no, because the coronavirus can live on a surface for at least 24 hours. So your clothes are like a fomite, which sure. means bacteria can live in certain uh, clothing on certain hard surfaces. So wow. you want to make sure you wash it in hot, if you can, hot water or put some sanitizer or or spray your clothes with Lysol just to kill the virus if you are exposed to it. Sure. Well, we're going to let you have the last word, Dr. Audrey, and and again, Dr. Albright from Riverside, California, and Dr. Audrey from Washington, D.C. We certainly appreciate you all coming out and dropping all that great information on us this evening, and hopefully our listeners, nationally and internationally, you have now received information that will make you able to deal with all of the coronavirus sightings and and bulletins and all the other things that are going to be happening in the future. So again, we thank you so much for listening. And as always, you know, on behalf of Thin Bad and BZ and Pastor C, we just thank you for allowing us to spend a few minutes sharing some information. And as always, we thank you for allowing us to give it to you straight. Straight. No, no chaser. chaser. Bye. Good evening. You've been listening to Straight No Chaser. So join us next week for more hot topics. And also, you can always catch us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, iHeartRadio. Radio.